Right, okay. So what I'm going to talk to you about is our journey so far. Our journey has been with Cherwell and South Northampton Council, so everything we've developed has been for both councils. So I just wanted to start off and talk about what was the purpose of our digital transformation program. So I, what do we want to get from it? Um, and these things that are on the slides, on this slide here, um, are not things that I made up for today. These were things that were actually part of our original business case. So um, the first one was uh, to give customers the opportunity to complete online end-to-end -end transactions for our services. So we wanted the citizen to be able to report um, 24 hours a day, um, completing an on online form. So we didn't want them obviously to ring the council. We wanted to make the obvious cost savings that you can make from people using um, online transactions. We wanted um, cases to be created in the back office um, immediately, automatically, um, we wanted the customer to be updated as the transaction went along. We wanted integration with the back office systems. So we, we've got things like Bartek is our waste management system. We've got IDOX Uniform, which we use for regulatory services. So we wanted integrations with those um, applications, but we wanted that to be easy to do as well, not, not to be complicated, not just techies that were doing that. So we, we, we wanted that to be able to be seamless and easy to do across the business. The next thing we wanted was to reduce the pressure on customer services so that they can dedicate their time and resources to those that actually need our help. Um, so what the, the aim there was a reduction in overall phone calls into the customer services centre. We wanted to improve our processes. We wanted to make them more efficient um, and for that, we were going to use the lean process to review our processes. But obviously, it's not just about the technology. It is about those processes as they happen in the back office that then lead to the technology. Um, we were looking for improved um, feedback opportunities. So we wanted to see high satisfaction, um, not just with our services from a sort of reporting and booking perspective, but also from actual service delivery. Um, so every time we launched a new service, we undertook feedback surveys um, as we launched each service. So again, we'll share some of those results from some of our feedback sur uh, surveys with you uh, later on in the presentations. We were moving away from a separate CRM and forms products. So at the time, we had Lagan um, as our CRM. So we had internal forms within Lagan that customer services agents completed. Those tended to be quite long-winded. There was a lot of scripting to complete in Lagan, so we didn't want to be doing that anymore. We also had a separate forms package for um, forms on our website. We had the um, FirmStep Chief Forms platform. So again, we wanted to move away from FirmStep Chief Forms. We want to make things easier for our customer services agents. We wanted them to be using the same forms that our customers were using um, on the premise that we don't train customers to fill in forms. <coughs> we wouldn't then need to train customer services um, staff in our forms. Where when they were using the lagging system, they had to have quite a lot of training on how to use it, how to use the scripting and where to find things. So those were some of the things that we were looking for in moving away from these legacy systems. Um, we were also, um, finally, um, for, on the purpose, we were looking for an improved experience with our website. So we were looking for a sort of consistent look, a consistent feel between forms and the website, so thinking about things like the branding and the buttons and things, so that when people were swapping from website to a form, um, they really wouldn't notice any difference. So that's the sort of the, the, the purpose of our uh, the project that we embarked on. So um, how did we do? So um, so the background to this um, digital customer project was that we um, launched two Jadu websites, one for Cherwell District Council and one for South Northampton Council. That was back in September 2017. So they were very successful. Again, I'll show you the websites briefly in a moment. Um, but we followed that up quite, quite quickly by replacing our intranets at both councils. They, they had separate intranets for both councils. So that was by January 18. We had um, developed and launched an intranet as well. Again, using the, the Jadu um, sort of platform. We then turned our attention to how we could actually improve that customer experience with the online forms that I talked about just now, uh, back office transactions, and all the processes using the Jadu platform. 
So we decided to invest in JADU XFP and JADU CXM, which is the forms um, and the back office system. So um, Bulky Waste was our um, first service that we launched in October 2018. Um, we launched that for both councils, Cheryl and South North Hans. Um, that was quite a challenging time because we actually developed it as one form, one system for both councils. But both councils, although they were a joint waste team at the time, they had different rules for everything. So as the example for bulky waste, um, different things could be collected by each council, different numbers of things could be collected. The prices that we charged for each council were completely different. So we had all those things which were quite challenging because we were trying to build this for a joint customer services team um, <coughs> using the same forms on each website. So, but we managed to overcome those challenges as, we, as we've always done um, in building things um, with different rules for the different councils. Um, the other reason that we went for bulky waste as our first service is we had no online facility at Cherwell. Um, Cheryl internally were booking um, bulky waste on a database that was built for uh, as an interim database in 2007. So um, it lasted well for 10 years, but obviously it needed to be replaced. And as I mentioned, there was, there was no online facility at the time. So obviously this new service allowed customers to um, book their own slots for bulky waste collections. They could pay online, so therefore it reduced the, um, the workload for the customer services. And it also reduced the um, workload for waste services as well. Everything's automated and it enabled them to increase revenue opportunities as well. So, so there are lots of benefits from the launch of Bulky Waste. Um, I mentioned that after each service, um, we were looking for customer satisfaction. So we sent each customer who did a booking a survey um, and we were quite pleased to see high, consistently above 80 and 90% um, sort of rates coming back from those surveys. Um, others are going to touch on those surveys um, as we go on through the morning. But again, we had some quite good consistent results and we can sh we're going to share those results with you as well. The, the next thing that we needed to do was to quite frantically build all our achieved forms. We, ha we had, um, it, uh, by now it was about October 20, 2018 um, and we realised that our firm step contract was running out at the end of November 2018. So it was about six or seven weeks after this realisation kicked in. So I got a team of people together sat down with them and in about six or seven weeks we built about a hundred forms um, we, we looked at trying to automate it but in the end we just sat we just rebuilt them on the Jadu platform Dan was one of the people that was involved in that quite, quite fair to say it was quite a hectic period <coughs> yeah it was lovely <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah about, about 100 forms in about six or seven weeks but we did it um, most of those were built as as was um, so we did concentrate on improvements to those forms then, so we've gone back and we're still going back and sort of looking at all those films. But the main thing was that we achieved our goal of moving away from the um, firm step platform that we were on. Um, next, we carried on with more waste, probably as most of you that have been on the Jadu journey, I'm sure have done lots of waste. So obviously then customers could report um, <coughs> missed bins, online purchase bins, replace, downsize, order shops, collections, all those sort of things that uh, we're all probably quite familiar with. Um, but obviously all this time reducing um, contact center call times. Um, we moved a little bit after that away from the waste arena into um, <coughs> complaints and FOIs. So we, we developed both of those um, using online forms and the back office using the Jadu CXM platform in the back office. And that's actually used across the whole council now. So we found it easy to use, we found it adaptable. Um, we've had lots of good feedback internally about the complaint system, as people see it in the FOI system. Um, different users um, are using that. So investigating officers receive their complaints, they update the back office, uh, cases are sent to monitoring officers for the response is sent out to the customer. But all of this is automated. Um, so things like the dates, the SLAs, <coughs> reminders, reports, all of that is, has been automated. So we've seen a lot of benefits, both internally and to the customer. The customer obviously starts with their online form and then the process is completely end-to-end. -end. <coughs> um, 
Um, we then moved on to looking at regulatory services. So uh, things like fly tipping, abandoned vehicles, dead animals, stray dogs, noise, antisocial behavior, pollution, all those sort of things. Um, they were all uh, processed using the existing lagging system. So we also required integration with IDOP Uniform. So now the customer um, completes an online form, the case is raised in JADU, it's then automatically integrated with IDOP Uniform. Um, so it is sort of complete end to end. Um, we were then able to move away completely and stop using Lagan. That was the last thing that transferred out of Lagan. That was around September 2019 when we uh, moved away from Lagan completely. So customer service is now doing all their um, transactions in the JADU platform. So obviously now we're working on getting more services online. Um, the one that we're working on at the moment is um, for our leisure services. So this is um, sports hall and um, school hub uh, bookings. Um, so obviously we're hoping that this is going to further reduce manual intervention. A lot of all these are booked manually over the telephone at the moment. So what we're doing there is um, using integration with um, Office 365 calendars. So the customer will come to the website, they'll be presented with a calendar so that they can um, book their, say a sports pitch for example. Um, that's, we're developing that at the moment. That's proven to be quite challenging, very complicated because there are lots of rules around um, sort of sports pitches. So for example, you can book quarter of a pitch, you can book half a pitch, you can book a whole pitch, you can book a half an hour, three quarters an hour, an hour. So, that, and that's just some examples that the variations are quite colossal and it, it's, it's quite complicated to develop, but the JADU platform with all the rules and things that we can put in it is capable of doing that. So that's, that's quite exciting because that's quite new. Um, and I know that when we get that developed and we go online with that, there's going to be other services that are going to be very interested in that sort of booking sort of area that we're looking at. So it's a bit of a watch this space on that one. Again, that's something that uh, Darren's involved in uh, working on at the moment. Right, okay, right, I'm actually going to show you some of our forms. Let me just switch to the website. Okay, right, this is um, Joe's <coughs> campus website. So just, just very quickly, this is the, again, JADU, JADU platform website. Um, um, the thing that I'm going to focus on today is around waste. I'm going to go to rubbish and recycling. And I'm going to first show you um, a bin order form. So a customer comes to our website. They want to order their first set of bins. Maybe they've just moved into a new property. So here we have bin order form. So a little <coughs> bit of introduction to the form. Let's skip over that. Right. This is a new live demo, so let's hope all this works. So I'm ordering some bins. Fortunately, I know my postcode. So pick that. Right. Obviously, it's going to ask me as a customer for some details. Um, I'll just get that one to say I'm not going to sign up for an online account for now. Right. So at Sherwell, we have green bin, blue bin, brown bin, and a food caddy. That's your, that's your full set of bins. So if you just moved into a property, then you'd be um, ordering a full set of bins, which is those there. Uh, the form does give you the option to say, I've already got some bins in my property, so therefore maybe I don't require some of them. So you can actually select, it obviously brings out that drop down list then. I'll go back to no for this. Next question it's given you is how many residents are in the property? And it's asking that eternal question that uh, waste people want to know. Do any of those people use nappies? The reason it's asking these questions is because the size of bin that you get is based on how many residents are in the property and whether you've got any young children. Um, if you do answer, including two nappies, it then asks you for dates of birth of children just to get some sort of verification that you've actually got young children. I won't do that one for now. So we'll say one to four residents, none in nappies. It's then going to give me, so it's then going to go to Bartek, so Bartek, Bartek being the back office system, it's then going to look for the earliest possible dates that it can, um, I can have a delivery, so I can pick a delivery date from that schedule. And all it's going to do here, this is just a review of my details, it's just asking me to confirm those details are right. It would ask, obviously ask me to submit the form. 
Now, some of the intelligence that's in that form <coughs> on the tables, <coughs> in the middle of the tables, I have actually sort of put the process flow that we yeah. use for this. I'll just sort of talk through briefly just some of the, the things on here. So starting from the top, the green box, obviously the instruction page that we saw on the website, the delivery address that we saw that I put in. It's some of the logic that it's doing is some of these sort of red boxes. So on the left hand side, it's, it's done a postcode lookup. So if it can't find my property, it's going to end the process. It's going to give you a nice message to say, sorry, you're not in our area. Um, going over to the right hand side, there's a, couple, there's a couple of red boxes there that are saying where there's some um, custom logic built into the form. So this custom logic is saying, is this a South North Hans Council address? Um, if it is, it's going to give you a message. It, you're on the wrong website, you need to go onto their website. Because obviously this system does work for both Cheryl and South North Hans Councils. And it's also going to do a bit of logic to the address to see if there's a commercial property. Because if it's a commercial property, then it's going to give you a message to say, sorry, you can't order any bins. So that's where the process ends for there. But assuming, as, as in the case that I showed you, it's a residential address, it's then going to go on. It's then going to do a bit of logic to say, is it a flat? Because obviously if it's a flat, you may not be ordering bins um, because lots of them have got communal bin areas. What it does in that case, it does end the process, but it'll actually send your case to the back office so the back office know that you're trying to order bins for a flat. The back office will get into contact with you so that they can find out why you're trying to order bins. But it won't do it automatically so that you're not automatically trying to order for um, addresses that are not, not allowed sort of bins. Um, assuming everything's okay then, so then um, you've input your details. Um, it's gonna go on to do that logic that we talked around, um, whether you've got any residual bins at the moment. If you haven't, it'll order all of them. Uh, it's then gonna go on to ask you about the details of the children that we saw. Um, if you've got five or more children, then it does go on just to create a case in the back office um, and you'll get a contact from, again, from our um, waste back office. So they contact you if you've got more than five children and therefore for the size of bin that you need or the number of bins that you need. Um, if Assuming that all of that is fine, you've put in your details of your children or your household makeup is fine, then as we saw on the form, you can select your delivery date. It's then going to create that case um, within CXM and it's also going to create the case within Bartek and that, that case when it's created in Bartek will automatically be assigned to a bin or you know, a bin round or a bin crew and your bin will get delivered and that's the sort of the end of the process. Right and the, the final of the forms that I just quickly wanted to uh, show you, well, it's not a form, <coughs> it's just something that we developed um, just before Christmas that we were really pleased with. And this is, a, I call it bin calendar, it's a bin collection search. Right, okay, so what you get back there. So I've just all done, put in my postcode. Um, again, it's done, it's done that search back to Biotech. Um, Biotech has come up with each of my bins. Um, brown and blue on the recycling bin. So as I said earlier, those are the ones I put out this morning, Tuesday the 25th of February is my next collection. And then my green bin, which is my residual bin, gets collected next week, which is Tuesday the 3rd of March. So that's a, that's a really useful tool. We're really pleased with that. Launching it just before Christmas on the South North Hans website first was the ideal time to launch it because obviously there are changes to bin collections around Christmas. So the only caveat to this, that I do keep reminding the um, depo on, is providing they've updated the back office or that they've updated Biotech. But providing they've done that, then obviously this is going to pick up that information and give the customer that information. Um, thus saving the customer having to phone up and say, when am I been emptied over Christmas? So not only is it giving you this all year round, but when changes are made to those rounds in Biotech, it's going to update you with that, that information. So yeah, we were sort of really pleased with that. And again, it's, it's, using, it's using the website, the Jadu website, it's doing a call, call to the Biotech system just to retrieve that information and just presenting it with a nice picture, um, nice and friendly way to the customer. <coughs> 